okay, we all start somewhere. But I want to talk about five big mistakes that beginning hammock campers make. Number one thing people forget, or they tend to forget, are drip lines. On a hammock, drip lines are so essential if you want to make sure that you don't get completely soaked after spending a night kind of sheltering under your tarp uh, from the rain. Drip lines are the way to do it. Um, drip lines, all they do are they're a piece of cord or string that uh, allow water that's running off of the trees or your tree straps or whatever you're using to not run onto your hammock body. And they're pretty simple to make. I've done a video on this before. Be sure to check it out in the cards. It's right up there. But it's very simple. It's very easy to make sure that you don't end up with a, a wet butt. Laying like a banana in a hammock does not work for the majority of people. You know, for, for some people, there are always some exceptions, people who um, do better with that kind of system or setup. But for the majority of people, you should be laying on the diagonal, which means not straight on from hammock tree to tree. And also, that's just the best way overall to make sure you get the flattest lay that uh, you possibly can. Most of your beds, I'm guessing, are not shaped like a banana. Um, they're flat or fairly flat, even if it's elevated a little bit and uh, laying on the diagonal on a hammock replicates this. So, sleeping like this, straight on, is very, very uncomfortable. I mean, my body is not made to do this. I already have kind of some pain in the back of my knees. I can feel everything kind of stretching the way it's not supposed to. It just does not feel good. Don't lay this way. So what you want to do is lay on the diagonal. So my head is over here. My feet are over there. And this, because I achieve a flatter lay, is a lot more comfortable. With a hammock, you have to make sure you have under insulation of some kind. Maybe you can get away, to, get away with it if you're sleeping in temperatures of 70 degrees plus if you're in really warm climates. Um, but anything lower than that, for, so for the majority of people who are doing three season um, hammock camping, you need under insulation of some kind. Now that can be something as simple as a foam pad. That's what I'm using to sit on right here now. Um, kind of a blue yoga mat, even uh, pieces of Reflectix. Um, the most comfortable way to make sure you, you stay warmer is an under quilt or some people call it an under blanket. Um, there are lots of different options, but you have to make sure that you, you uh, insulate your um, butt and bottom part of your body from the cool air on the outside of the hammock. So under insulation is key. Another big mistake that I see is people not using tree straps. Now this is not necessarily something that will uh, affect you, someone who's using a hammock, as much as it does the trees. Um, and people who make laws um, regulating the parks, or laws or rules regulating the parks. Um, there's been a lot of uh, comments about people who hammock camp and they just use the ropes that come with a, a cheaper, uh, more budget hammock and those things do tend to damage trees. I've seen things where, you know, bark is kind of rubbed off. Um, if you're doing that with your own trees, then that's perfectly fine. But if you're hammock camping in a state or, you know, a national park, please make sure you use uh, tree straps. It just damages the tree in terms of something that's cosmetic. And the idea behind it is if you're taking off their kind of protective coating or barrier, it makes it more susceptible to uh, being damaged by insects or other things that want to harm the tree. And last but not least, uh, one of the big things I've seen people who are um, hammock camping do, especially if you're, if you're new, is they try to make the hammock as flat as possible when they tie it up. So they think to themselves, okay, well I want to make sure that I get in this hammock, and they don't allow the hammock to sag. It has to have a sag in it. You know, a ridge line makes um, kind of the sag consistent and you can kind of hang it the same way every time. Um, if you don't have a ridge line, um, I've seen a lot of people just kind of try to cinch the hammock down, make it almost as flat as a, uh, as a kind of a ratchet strap and kind of make it really taut. Um, not only can you possibly weaken the hammock, it makes it easier to fall out of the hammock that way um, just because it's, it's so rigid. I've seen people kind of try to, sorry, I don't mean to laugh, uh, but I do see people kind of try to jump in the hammock and uh, kind of tip out of it or flip out of it. Um, you want to have a consistent hang every time. You usually want to make sure you have about a 30 degree angle and try to check to make sure you're at that angle. And that's kind of the most comfortable way to kind of get in the hammock. Now most people are familiar with checking the tension on your ridge line to make sure that it's kind of an appropriate hang. It's not supposed to be too tight. It's supposed to be able to twist it kind of like that to make sure that 
the ridge line is not too tight and you kind of have a good hang angle. Something I've not noticed that many people talk about, and shout out to Rick for saying this to me, is that you should actually check that tension after you have all your gear in there. Because once you start adding things like your sleeping pad, your quilt, whatever it is that you have in there, then this ridge line starts tightening up by itself without you being inside of it. So something to consider is that if you're checking the tension in your ridge line, make sure you have all your stuff in there first before doing that. Uh, thanks as always for watching guys. Hope this helped out those of you guys who are finding this video who are new to hammock camping um, and hopefully it was helpful for you. Peace.